So you're super big on integrating psychology into just the customer success function. Maybe like from a, let's talk about onboarding, like from a learning yeah. perspective, like why is live training maybe not always the best way to, to onboard customers? It's expensive and time consuming and it's not necessarily better. You know, you can have the sense that, um, that people are there and therefore they're definitely going to get trained because their butt has to be in the seat. Can you tell if they're reading email? Cause I can't. Um, and they probably are and, you know, are multitasking in some way. And even if you do the live training, we forget 90% of any trainings or any, you know, instructional stuff within 24 hours. But People don't like to be like, hi, I completely forgot what you told me yesterday and I now don't know what I'm doing. People aren't comfortable saying that. So you're far better psychologically to drip training and have it in multiple modalities. So for people who like to just listen to things, you know, you can have video because people can kind of multitask with that. You can have, you know, something like Scribe can create, you know, screenshots if people want to see that. I tend to think video is great along with, uh, I really like what Loom does in that you can record a Loom video uh, and it will then, if you have like the paid AI version, which is not expensive, you can, with a click of a button, create an SOP out of what you just recorded. Or you can create a ticket, like it knows how to interpret things to do that. Um, but that I have found hugely helpful in CS for creating SOP documentation that's really, I mean, it extrapolates things that I wouldn't think of. It's like, be sure to watch out for X, Y, Z, which like I never said in there. So you want to have those different modalities for people who are readers, for people who are watchers, listeners that, you know, keep it short, like short little pieces, make it easy give them a win. We get very few wins in our day and we're very easily addicted to dopamine. So, you know, and if you don't think so, how far are you from your phone? You know? Um, yeah, I'm right here too. So <laughs> having any sort of acknowledgement that they're picking something up, that they did the right thing is going to make them like your product more. Like even a little like burst of confetti that does a lot to our brains. You can have an email do it too. If you you know, can't do it in app. Be like, congratulations, we saw you did X, Y, and Z in the product today. You're moving right along. You know, look at you, you're a star. People need that. Um, you can make it more formal or less, but you need to give that brief reward. You know, it, it, I tend to think of adoption, which is really the point of all of this, of adoption as habit formation. The way that we form habits is you have to make them small, you have to make them easy, and you have to make them rewarding. Because if it's not tied to a reward, you're not going to keep going back for it. And is it the same whether you're doing like PLG onboarding? So you mentioned some of like the confetti in the app, but versus like, you know, more enterprise onboarding where you're dealing with multiple personas and admins and it might take six months. Like, how do you think about the enterprise onboarding side, maintaining momentum, separating out all the yeah. personalities? Yeah. How do you think about kind of that, that style of onboarding? That's going to take a lot more work. Uh, I still believe much of it is um, you're able to record a lot of it, templatize a lot of it, um, because you're teaching people to do the same thing. So if you have sort of like choose your own adventure paths, like I use Calendly as an example a lot, because even though they are PLG, they have a ton of enterprise accounts and you can, if you look on their website, if you look at, you know, even their marketing does this, but their CS does this too, their onboarding, they have the easiest product in the world, right? Book a meeting here by pressing a button, like link up your calendar. They don't need to say more than that, but they have different marketing for, you know, if you're in customer success, you know, book three times more QBRs. Uh, this company increased their retention by 10% just by implementing Calendly versus uh, HR departments, like increase time to hire by 23%, you know, make uh, make booking seamless with, uh, with your interviewees and, you know, stuff like that. Speaking to the language of what they specifically are trying to accomplish. It's still going to be the same how to, but by using that language of here's what's in it for you, here's why you should bother, that's what's going to make people actually do it. So yeah, you can do it with a human, you can do it with email. It's a matter of testing what's most effective and 
and how complicated it is. You know, if you do have a really tech heavy enterprise product, you're going to need people and you're going to need technical account managers and you need to understand the nuances of those accounts. Like if you want to be serving enterprise customers, you need to know how to weave in all those different requirements and be set up for that. And I've often found you really got to split out like the admin side of things, the technical setup, getting things mm-hmm. going in the, yeah. and, you know, in the app and product versus like the end user enablement and training, which is like mm-hmm. radically different. And if you get that like out of order, it's going to go haywire and yeah, yeah. And, like, end users are going to be like, what, what's going on in here? And so on yeah. and so forth. So yeah, it gets tricky. 